Well, good still morning. I uh, hope you are not starving yet. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity, being a local person from this university, to talk to this audience about wonderful title, Editing the Next Generation of Humans. We are not going to do that like it's written here, but it's an attractive title to get your attention. So a short introduction, and I will start by somebody you probably all know, Schumpeter, an economist saying in the 1930, around this moment, innovation changes the values onto which the system is based. So the technologies are not independent of values. And all of what we are going to talk about is to position technologies and values. In medicine, which is my background, and in research, which is my profession, we actually, in the domain of genomics, uh, have to think about where we position ethical, legal, social aspects between two extreme positions. Either technology has no relation to value, or technology determines strictly our values. So in the domain of human genomics, most of the developments are actually dealing with information, no manipulation. All the manipulation are to extract information for genetic diagnosis and so on. And there are already a lot of issues there about uh, data management, of course, data protection. What do you do with all this data, this big data, when the, the uh, interpretation is evolving? And what do you do with all the data that you are not searching for? So there are a number of questions outside of any manipulation of the genome itself just by dealing with the information. And then another part of genomics developments are dealing with the topic of the day, manipulation and transformation. So genome editing is uh, something that is very much talked about also in the media. It's a way of uh, making specific changes at a specific sequence on the DNA uh, that constitutes the genetic material. And when this, there is a cut, this is repaired, and the change and the cell can be edited for this part of the genome. This is no, not new. It has been done by different technologies for many years. But with this technology called CRISPR-Cas9, uh, which has um, had five years now of massive dissemination of the technique in all domains, including the human domain, uh, all over the world. Why? Because these molecular scissors that are at stake are more specific. The technology is easier, cheaper, and faster. And that changes the possibilities. It makes it possible to foresee more efficient genome modifications, more precise, more secure for therapeutic purposes. And this can be done, or at least can be conceived at somatic cells, all the cells of the body, or the cells that are transmitted or transmit the genetic information from generation to generation. This is the red line that has never been crossed for the moment. No modification of the human genome transmitted to the next generation. And here we come with what we call the Cassandra complex. Ethicists are being too negative or too late. And uh, how to deal with uh, these domains evolving very quickly, uh, respecting a number of values, and at the same time not blocking the possible um, progress. This time lag is very important. You can see the red curve, which is the development of the technologies. And then the blue one is the good guidelines for using those technologies. And there is a gap. When you start using a technology, you don't know what are the good practices, the good guidelines, the good framework to do that. And they, they, this is where we are with this genome for the moment. 
So I will make a focus, as we talk about the next generation, on embryo and germ cells research, so transmission to the next generation. And by citing first George Church, who was specifically talking, uh, is a um, professor of genetics at Harvard, uh, of the potential of this CRISPR-Cas9 technology. And he said, talking about the future is better than letting it sneak up on us. We need to do more of this, and we will be left with very limited vocabulary in the space between positive and negative hype. So what is hype? What is real? What are the real potential? Where to start and when to start? So there are different possible strategies. I'm not going to uh, insist on the different uh, aspects. It's not uh, specifically biological um, uh, audience here. But you can uh, work on the pluripotent stem cells and then transplant them in order that gametes can be produced in vivo with a modification. You can work on germs, germ stem cells themselves or you can work on the embryo at the zygote stage. In practice, we are not yet there, but thinking of it is useful. So there are technical challenges. Increase efficiency of the technique, decrease what we call off-target, that is what you modify, which is not your aim to modify in the DNA uh, in, the, in the genome, and then quality controls. And there are ethical challenges, and here again, I mean, these two people, Francis Collins and um, George Church, debating, should we edit the human germ line? This is the same sentences, maybe a bit more readable. And this debate is fierce. Something we should, some we should not, because if we start, we don't know where to stop. I make it uh, very simple. But the ethical concerns are actually tightly linked to the possible applications of such a technology. And uh, on the right side, you see that uh, on the basis, there is a um, very uh, um, big uh, arrow and then much less ethical concern when you address, for example, the fact of providing a possibility for a family to bear a normal child without a disease that is known in this family. You could remove deleterious uh, alleles, deleterious forms of those genes. We could replace borderline alleles by more common alleles when we are not completely sure about the effect of those alleles. And then the maximum, the baby a la carte, that's what you read in uh, 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 newspapers, and maybe increase and modify human features, which is uh, completely irrelevant uh, for the moment in terms of uh, what we can really do and what will be possible one day. But all these uh, possibilities are discussed. So what are the current positions? I'm going to cite here the work of a group uh, in the French Society of Human Genetics and the French uh, Society of uh, Cell Therapy and um, uh, uh, Gene Therapy. And this uh, group of people worked together and came out with some proposals specifically oriented on this germline uh, possibility of edition or not. And this, after the big discussions, was that it would be nice to allow research in the field which would actually require a modification of the French law, the present French law. No clinical application until efficiency and safety have reached an acceptable level, and a highly acceptable level. There may be clinical application that would warrant genome editing, so it's not a closed door. And about the moratorium, because there is also the group of people uh, banning the clinical uh, application for the moment. In France, it's not necessary because this law is already preventing uh, these kind of applications. But should we proclaim a moratorium 
because of the international concept on the uh, domain. We also worked on something that I'm not going to detail, which is how to translate into French genome editing. Our colleagues in Italy have had the same uh, discussion. Uh, so there are uh, the basis of this uh, article is actually the way we present, we use words. It's not neutral, and I go back to the technology is not neutral, but the way we talk about the technology is not either neutral. Several bodies in France and elsewhere are discussing these issues for the moment, from uh, academies, uh, learning and professional societies, like the one I, um, I mentioned, institutions in France, INSERM, which is the National Institute for Health Research, at the international level, the same kind of groups, different uh, committees, ethics committees. And in USA in February there was, this year, there was the recommendation that proceeding to clinical application with a very strong oversight and control could be permitted. So that was the first crossing the line that has been proposed. The INSERM ethics committees, I'm not going to read all of that, uh, is um, giving uh, its opinion. Uh, and I will just say that they consider that we have to respect that any germline modification that the third point for reproductive transmissions is forbidden for the moment until the risk are clearly established and societal debate held. And this aspect, societal debate, is very important because it's not only the researchers, not only the technologists, not only the policy makers, but in very difficult situation where we ask ourselves, should we allow ourselves to modify the human genome in the future or not, uh, we need a societal debate. The American Society of Human Genetics has about the same um, position, uh, but currently what they say is that there is no reason to prohibit in vitro germline, so the research in vitro should be done. Of course, there is the perspective of the in vivo when you do the research in vitro, so thinking ahead is important. The European Group on Ethics, don't read all of that, that's uh, the body that um, um, council the European Commission on ethical aspects. And what they have said is, it's an important topic. We have to work on that at a time. And the debate has to be inclusive. So you can see that all the experts groups talk about a societal debate. And it's not so easy to organize. Uh, there is a recent publication called Fostering Responsible Research with Genome Editing Technologies, a European Perspective. And what these uh, professionals call for is the um, sort of uh, supervision at European level in order to um, foster, to see, to discuss, and to have a body to refer to at European level. So that's where we are for the moment with these technologies. And what I'm going to conclude with is talking to you about a forum called Euroscience Open Forum that's going to be held here in Toulouse uh, next year from the 9th to the 14th of uh, July 2018. I'm what is called the champion of this event. And there are many, many different topics uh, that can be uh, developed in this uh, forum that uh, gather four to 5,000 people uh, researchers, policy makers, uh, also journalists, um, students, uh, young researchers, industry people. And all these people discuss basically what are the relations between science, technology, innovation, society. And of course, on different uh, aspects, uh, there is a huge list of um, possible um, topics that will be held in different uh, sessions. And one of them, for sure, is the one I was talking today about, with the positions and the developments, both technological uh, and in the domain of regulation uh, in this domain, in the topic health in our societies. There is a call. Still, you can participate in it. 
for the Science to Business program, which is an entire program of ESOF, and also open until the end of this month, Careers, which is a topic of a program for, for young researchers. What can I do? And there are milestones, and I will just finish with that. Uh, 31st of October, and then the registration for this event with a lot of uh, uh, interesting topics will be open by the end of this year. Thank you very much for your attention.